Hey there everyone, AJ back again for the Mighty Glustick channel. I make videos about Dungeons and Dragons lore full time and have a collection of hundreds of monster ecology and strategy videos on my channel, including a complete A to Z list of every monster in the monster manual. If you like what I do, please consider subscribing as I upload at least twice a week. As promised, a bit of a spell jammer video today. This is actually the start of a grand exploration of realm space. But first things first, when I mention the prime material plane, in my videos about planet creatures, D&D cosmology, and the larger multiverse, the prime material for me, and I think for the current developers and writers of 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons, incorporates both Planescape and Spelljammer as the default cosmology of the game, which allows us as dungeon masters and storytellers to include a massive array of different settings and themes in our games, completely seamlessly, as you'll discover. First, let me show you this map. This is a map of the Phlogiston Sea, a hyperspace of rainbow-hued mists that flows in currents across vast distances. This is the original state of the prime material plane, and nobody has any idea what greater entities or ecologies govern this realm. It is an, it's infinite and can occasionally be quite dangerous, but it is the stuff of the D&D universe. Is, uh, that's what it's made from, and thanks to time travel and such being a reality of the high fantasy role-playing game it's pointless to ask questions about what began it all who was here first how was it built and so on events are were or or are going to be destined to take place that create the reality that dungeons and dragons characters experience as the here and now i have some creatures from the elemental plane of time that i will be bringing to you later so we can carry on that conversation then and for those of you particularly in recent videos who are adamant that there's no time travel for deities and stuff in Dungeons and Dragons. You're clearly wrong. You're clearly wrong. Just stop. Within the drifting phlogiston, there are immense structures. The most impressive of all are the crystal spheres. And the one we are having a very detailed look at is called Realm. It contains realm space, and it is thought by many scholars to be one of the oldest of the crystal spheres. Realm space contains the Forgotten Realms, and the world I talk about the most on this channel, the planet Toril. Approaching the outer surface of the crystal sphere, the spell jamming vessel has to slow down from the immense speeds achievable in D&D hyperspace of the Phlogiston Mists as the gravity of the sphere takes hold. However, despite its incredible size and apparent mass, the sphere doesn't pose a danger of crushing, crushing anything that gets too close to it. In fact, the, the gravity is feeble until very close to the surface of the sphere, and even then it's about the same as the surface of Toril, perhaps a bit less. On the outside, it's almost featureless. The curvature is so slight that even when some distance from it, it looks like a massive dark wall. Here and there spotted uh, with dim glimmers as natural portals, portals open across the surface, many thousands of miles apart. When this, uh, when this close to it, it seems inconceivable that such a thing is an artificial construction. It's too enormous to even fathom how it could have been done. These things are the work of a much higher power than anything those inside the spheres are aware of. The phlogiston space around the realm's uh, sphere is a vertex, a point where a triangular pattern of currents or flows within the phlogiston mists meet. This path is called the radiant triangle, and it makes travel between realm space, grey space and crin space a lot faster, though because the triangle, uh, radiant triangle has a direction of flow, it means that to get to crin, the spelljammer ship has to travel past grey space in order to get there. Travel times between the spheres are fast, considering the distance, and a bit random as one is travelling through a current, not just a measure of distance. So it can take around 130 days, lifting off from Toril, going through realm space, entering the phlogiston, navigating out of the zone of the uh, sphere's gravity and accelerating enormously, then slowing down, entering grey space, flying through grey space, and then travelling, touching down on the surface of Earth essentially going from the Forgotten Realm setting to the Greyhawk setting via a spell jamming vessel. Now, when you step back and look at the map of just the local known spheres in the infinite phlogiston, the mind-boggling scale of it becomes a little bit more clear to us. Obviously, routes that are greatly shortened by the instance uh, and existence of flows within the phlogiston make travel between spheres located along those paths very common, and is the bedrock of the politics of the larger prime material plane. Over top of that, we complicate things even more by the existence of portals and other planes, which includes the political factions and conflicts of planescape. 
interplanar travel, teleportation. So it's an incredibly rich system that forms the background of our multiversal storytelling. I'll now switch over to the inside view of the realm sphere and quote directly from the source material for this as it is the most complete record of it that we have available. So from the book Realm Space by, by Dale Slade Henson published in April 1991 and I quote uh, the radius of uh, realm space is 3.2 million miles, the sphere, uh, which is 5.15 billion kilometers. Realm space is about 640,000 million miles in diameter. The shell, whether viewed from the inside or outside, looks like a perfectly flat, solid wall. The surface, somewhat bumpy and cold to the touch, is completely immune to nearly every known damage, attack or spell. It feels and a bit like ceramic. Nothing known in the universe can begin to tear or crack it. However, I'll step outside the, uh, the quote here, there is a broken sphere. It's quite a famous location that's uh, reasonably close to realm space. This indestructibility is a blessing for the inhabitants within the sphere. If the crystal shell were ever to be breached, the phlogiston outside would doom the planet's inside. The phlogiston would cause worldwide atmospheric burning, and the sun would ignite into a fireball powerful enough to disintegrate every planet in the sphere. Occasionally, the crystal sphere itself mysteriously opens a portal to the phlogiston. This portal allows solid bodies to pass through either way, but it does not allow phlogiston to enter and contaminate the perfect vacuum of the wild space. Portals seemingly open and close at random on the sphere. These temporary doorways can be sought by divination spells or by magical items specifically designed for that purpose. Conjuration magic can be used to open a portal wherever desired as well. This, however, immediately closes the naturally occurring portal farthest away from the con conjuring location as a reaction. Many ships have been lost in space, but it is not known whether any of these losses directly related to a naturally occurring portal, portal being cl prematurely closed, thereby crushing the ship into unidentifiable particulates. A famous mage from the third world of the system said once that there are always 3,200 natural and unnatural portals open on this crystal sphere at any one time. The sages, with the silent help of mages, have found a law that applies to all known crystal spheres. This law dictates that the size of the sphere is governed by the orbital radius of the farthest planet from the primary orbital attractor. The primary, usually the system Sun, as in realm space, is the central astrological body in the solar system. The planet farthest away from the uh, Sun in this sphere is Hakatha, which has an orbital radius of uh, 160,000... 1600 million miles I should say. This means that the crystal sphere must have a radius of uh, th as I said 3.2 billion miles or 320,000 million miles. With a sphere this massive it is no wonder that its surface appears to be perfectly flat. A feature unique to realm space is the hundreds of millions of glyphs and wards that cover the inside lining of this crystal sphere. These printed words are hundreds of miles tall and completely illegible. If a mage of 10th level or higher performs a read magic spell, the lettering becomes discernible. When read, even if merely by thought, the magic stored in these writing is invoked. The writing maintains its continuous power even when read. So unlike a scroll, these, these words do not disappear. Um, the magic is activated efficiently, uh, giving it an unlimited source of power. The magic can be of any known or unknown spells. Spells such as Wyvern's Watch, Anti-Magic Shell and Blade Barrier spread themselves across the sphere thousands of miles wide, but thousands more remain possible as well. Mysteriously, no two spells written on the sphere are identical. Because of the writing's incredible size, the spell effect expands itself as well. A person foolish enough to read one of these glyphs unleashes a spell at over 100 times the power and size of any normal spell. The saving throws should be the same as the, a typical spell though, so characters have at least a slim chance of surviving. The writing's origins are as with the crystal sphere remains a complete mystery, but it is a common belief that the powers of realm space them, uh, place them there to protect their sphere and to slay stupid or greedy visitors. I personally think it was like a spell book that was created by the thought of some immense entity. The chance of reading a beneficial spell is one in a thousand, so it's impossible to, by any means to duplicate or copy the writings onto paper, since they don't disappear from the, the sphere itself. Uh, they can't be transferred onto uh, a scroll or a spell book in the usual fashion. Where the writings on the crystal sphere shell are 
interrupted by dots or dashes and tilt themselves, the flickering of pseudo stars shine with the everlasting light. So a, a, a comma or a full stop is actually a star to the people who are on the surface of the planets down below. These portals open to the quasi-elemental plane of radiance most of the time, or sometimes to the plane of fire. These radiances give the spheres inhabitants the illusion of twinkling stars and constellations. These portals range in diameter from only a few yards to hundreds of miles long. The different sizes give the illusion of distances in the celestial heavens. Most of the portals are large enough for spell jamming vessels to pass through, but travelling through these portals is an act of suicide. Once the ship enters the plane of radiance, any wood, cloth or other combustible material begins to burn immediately. No saving throw is allowed to counter the effect. Metallic substances melt in two rounds and all living entities must make saving throw versus... Uh, would it be constitutional or strength basically like a dragon's breath or die instantly that they the instant they enter the plane unless they've got heavy amounts of magical protection and they are well prepared for this eventuality thereafter survivors suffer 40 10 points of damage per round so that's the sort of damage mitigation you have to have in play should the characters enter these portals they can easily escape by backing out or turning around unfortunately they may not survive the heat long enough to remove themselves uh, the Manual of Planes completely de details these planar traveling places. I've got a video on um, the color, the Alien Radiance video has got a description of the plane of radiance for those who are interested. And there's other videos in my Explores series where I talk about these outer planes. Luckily, these portals, usually separated by thousands of miles, cannot be entered accidentally. The bright light radiating, radiating from these openings casts deep shadows on passing ships, but as long as they remain at least 100 miles away, there is no danger to the eyes of the passengers, even though they're incredibly bright that close. The tremendous heat within the plane is not felt on the plane until it's entered. There's no danger to the adventurer from these pseudo stars when they breach the crystal sphere, even if a spell jamming vessel uh, or, or a portal opens over an existing color pool to the quasi elemental plane of radiance. Uh, these, the portal created by the spell jammer supersedes the planar opening, allowing safe passage over top of it. Once the portal closes, the planet opening once again shines, but it's uh, through its never-ending brilliance. Any inhabitant planet side who happens to be watching the stars at that particular moment will see one of the stars wink out of existence for a few minutes as the ship passes through, and then once the portal closes, the, sh the star just blinks back on again, which can be very confusing. Um, and uh, obviously the, the astronomers of, of uh, the Forgotten Realms have some interesting theories until, of course, they, they read descriptions of it and go, oh, this, the elves in particular named all the different constellations that you find in the uh, Forgotten Realms. But yeah, and they're not, a, they weren't aware. I don't think that the stars are in fact just basically portals on top of a huge surface. Another feature found only in realm space is the group of humanoids who continually walk across the inside of the crystal sphere. This is so weird. These humanoids are a motley mixture of humans, elves, dwarves, halflings, orcs, and any other intelligent bipedal life form existing on the planets of the sphere. The offspring of intermixed races present themselves here as well. This group, numbering in the hundreds of thousands, align themselves in a perfectly straight line, side by side. They walk to greet together across the inside of the sphere in a north-south trajectory. They all possess the mark of the god Torm on their palms. This group, called the Wanderers, walks continuously and without interruption. Their mouths move in a rhythmic pattern that resembles chanting, while their hands move in spell-like fashion. There's no way to communicate with them, and there is no way to stop their journey. In fact, they're not even in an environmental containing oxygen or any other type of air. The Wanderers have an armor class um, which is fairly consistent, um, uh, and if they are attacked, they all have about 25 hit points, and um, they've got the same sort of saving throw as a 10th level fighter. So um, they're tough, but not extraordinary. Legends say that the Wanderers are the souls of individuals who died performing evil deeds of horrific proportions. Their past life, or how they got there, is secondary to their current purpose. It is the Wanderers who allow Spelljammers to pass in and out of this particular crystal sphere. If these Wanderers cease to exist, so does the sphere's ability to produce portals. Their constant chant is the catalyst by which these portals are created. Kind of like they're, they're, they're the weave of the outer out of uh, the crystal sphere without the chanting of at least one wanderer the crystal sphere would close until another evil individual died on the sphere and was placed there 
If this huge line of normal sized humanoids comes into view, they're always walking in perfect formation, and when a portal opens directly in the path of the Wanderers, they actually fall out of the crystal sphere, disappearing forever into the phlogiston. Once gone, the missing Wanderers can be replaced, but the process is very slow. Every five years or so, roughly, one person is evil enough at the time of death to warrant this eternal servitude. These denizens of evil come from all of the deity's areas of influence. When an evil character is chosen for this honour, he is taught the chant of the Wanderer, and this chanting allows the spell gemming ships to create portals to pass through the sphere. This chanting never ceases. The souls of the Wanderers are eternally cursed to chant and walk across the sphere, so they're effectively immortal unless killed or they go drifting off into the phlogiston and die. During the time of Troubles, no spell jamming ships were able to pass through the surface. The powers uh, fall caused the loss of the portal creation um, system, and during this time the wanderers were free of their curse and their chanting stopped. Closed lips mean closed portals. So, very interesting. In the next video in this series, we shall be taking a more detailed look at the other planets in the realm sphere, the seven different worlds, because it's quite a fascinating bunch and we've not seen anything about it yet in 5th edition, so I think it's about time that we did so. Although it is for 2nd edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, you can pick up a PDF copy of Realm Space for 5 bucks from the Dungeon Masters Guild, link found in the video description down below. Uh, please hit the like button if you made it this far. Subscribe if you like what I do. Check out my Patreon for my exclusive content and for all the full scripts for these videos, apart from the quoted source from this uh, from the book. Buy some merchandise where you'll geek with pride and as always. Thanks for listening and I'll be back with more for you very soon.